doing it with self-love you know the fact that we're committing to struggling through it Mm -hmm. the fact that we're you know trying to do things that are working on the you know left hand shots of life um you know we're we're honoring our highest self and so i think that's been the biggest space for me is like don't do it for anybody else don't do it to try to make this team don't do it to try to you know get this end result do it because you know you said you would do it because it's like your mission you wrote it down and said you were going to do it daily because if you trust that for time it's gonna yield it's it's never you know flow isn't a destination like you're not going to just be at flow it's just kind of a constant you know balance of things it's it's how we recognize when we're out of a rhythm and i think that's learning yourself and yeah you know but you got to love yourself to learn yourself you know yeah. what i mean otherwise you're gonna run from it so I think. today's episode is sponsored by mind sport the number one meditation app for athletes all right hello and welcome to the first episode of the flow station podcast i'm your host will ferris and joining me today is the legend michael knight thank you for joining me bro <laughs> Appreciate it. I'm glad to be here. Well, thanks for having me, man. Yeah, man. We got a fly today, too, joining us. So Flying we got, around. We got two guests. He's right on you right now. <laughs> yeah, there he uh, goes. But today we'll be tuning in to Michael's take on flow, how he's been able to upgrade himself and others on his journey through basketball, training, music, and much more. Every time I train with Michael, I just feel so connected and deeply in tune on the court, and it carries off the court. I, I remember texting him two days later, like, man, I'm still flowing off that workout. And I just think he has a special take on how he trains athletes and he's very uh, consciously aware of what they need. So it's great to have him on. So some of his accomplishments, he's the co-founder of the Rebar Training Tool. He's a trainer for many high school, college, and pro athletes. He's a former college player at Seattle University and he played professionally in Europe and Asia. Uh, And he's also a singer songwriter. So we might get him to to sing a little bit today, right? Um, If if you're lucky. A little freestyle. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) All right, so just so we have a ground level of communication as we go into this conversation, how would you define flow personally for, for you and, and how you see it in your day-to-day life? Yeah, it's a beautiful question. I think um, the flow is just this space of uh, resiliency that you keep um, and this, this, this calm amongst the, the wave of life and the wave of the emotion or the experience within whatever you're going through. I think it's how you, uh, you know, identify what you root, root in you know, to keep you uh, locked into who you are and what you're about, what your mission is, but keep this space that's uh, av- available to, to, to bend and to, to you know, maneuver in a way that's, um, you know, not necessarily so rigid, but one that's going to, you know, welcome a little bit of imbalance, welcome a little bit of, you know, stress, uh, welcome a little bit of the unexpected, um, but just how you, how you deal with it, how you cope with it, how you... Uh, you know, find your space within that despite the state. So I think the flow is a beautiful thing. I think people kind of, um, it's becoming such a trendy word. I think people, a, lot, a lot of people say it, but I think the, the space is one that is uh, really special and it takes knowing yourself and knowing tools to get, to get you back into a rhythm of, you know, a connected pattern um, in, in, in whatever you do to really embody that state. and. Um, you know, it's been a, a fun journey to kind of understand that a little bit more so and learn more about it. And yeah, man, I like what you're doing here. So I'm happy to be here. <laughs> there goes that <laughs> Let's fly. Let's hit that fly. There goes that fly. So when you talk Going about flow for you, you, you talked about the journey of it and kind of knowing yourself. When How did you get started on this path how, or just a spiritual path in general and how you've tied it to basketball? I mean, every workout, it seems like with you, it's just so it's in tune with that. You have all these insights for me that I take off the court. Yeah, man. So it's a great uh it's a great question. Um, I think the, you know, the space has always been with, uh, you know, with faith and um, also with just the seek, the seek of, uh, you know, wanting to learn more. Um, I've always been, you know, a believer. I've always been somebody who's, um, you know, tried to tap into, you know, being extremely positive and understanding that, you know, being grateful, thankful, and, and humble and appreciative for the, the spaces that you're in is, you know, the way to create a, a vibrance and an energy um, around what you're doing. And so I just, you know, I, I, I take, you know, I don't take my highs too high, I don't take my lows too low. I try to operate in a certain um, wave. And I think that's been a, a focus for a, a while for me. Um, and I think the space is to seek and to understand things deeper and to want to, um, to want to, uh, you know, find and, and, and be a curious learner about whatever it is you're doing and, and find ways to refine in, in the craft and 
Um, you know, for me, it's just been a, a constant journey on how to refine and how to be better. And a lot of it has been in a, you know, athletic and a basketball space, but then a training space and it's overflowed into, you know, just how I can be more productive, more efficient, um, you know, do things in a way that is going to keep me in a, a space of what we're talking about, of mm -hmm. flow, but then um, also constantly improving, constantly refining. And I think that's the, the beautiful connectedness of it. If you're, if you're in that space and you're, you're, you're truly flowing, so to speak, you know, there's a, there's never a ceiling. There's never a, a, a roof that you hit. It's just this constant evolution, this constant, um, you know, progression. And, you know, you, you know how to deal with the setbacks. You know how to deal with the, the highs and, and the lows. Mm -hmm. so, so. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if that answers your question at all, but no, for you know, sure. We're just kind of off the cuff right now. No, I mean, I, I, I what I really wanted to ask you is. too is like you you always seem to have this space with you whenever I I come into the gym. I mean, I know you're a busy guy. You got all these different things you're doing, but it feels like I have your attention, your full attention, and your, your full energy that's there. Um, and me and my buddy have, have talked about that before, Cole Rue Johnson. Yeah. Just Cole. When, when, yeah, when we get in there, bro, we just feel like there's a there's a different style of energy that this guy has that it's it's something that that we want to embody when we when we go meet people and we're we're around people. Um, how do you keep that space in your day? Is there certain meditation tactics you do, mindfulness? things that you have that that really reground you in the morning or throughout the day or is it just something that you've made made note of when I meet someone they're going to get my full attention my full energy and I'm going to try to help them be the best that they can be yeah uh first of all thank you I appreciate that and um I think it's a uh, presence you know presence is so important and um you know the more I've tuned and worked on my space i think i've gotten to see how important that is and mm -hmm. so um for me it's uh it's rituals i think it's rituals i think it's routines i think it's um you know mastering your own energy and, and discovering your own pace and figuring out your your tempo your rhythm and you know being curious and open to things like you're speaking of like your faith i think you know you know being a believer for me is, is huge I, I believe in something more than you know this out there, I believe in. I believe in God. I believe in a higher power. I believe that there's something out there. You know, it's, it's higher than us. I think. I think that's part of it. So I always have this like, um, you know, vibrance of, you know, what else could be, and and you know, making the most of time and being thankful for my time. I think that's important. But then I think the the space of understanding yourself is really important. And how do you do that? You know, how do you how do you really mm -hmm. master and learn yourself more so? And I think that's like the the space of being a seeker and putting. You know, people around you who are going to refine you, who are going to, you know, be able to give you an, an opinion that is of value. Um, you know, finding you know constructive criticism from people who, whose feedback is actually helpful, and mm -hmm. um, you know, being able to implement that. Um, you know, for young cats listening and watching and watching, you know, find, you know, people who are in the the space that you want to be, who are older than you, and connect with them, learn about them, ask them about, you know, their journey. Um, you know, be be somebody who's open and. You know, they'll remember you as the young homie who's, you know, always trying to seek and find things. And I think that's important. You can kind of pay it forward with that and, you know, um, learn from other people's successes. I think that's super important. But for me, um, I think that the space is just kind of being consistent, you know, being consistent with your space and, and, and the rituals that you have. And, you know, I, I meditate a lot. I pray a lot. I do a lot of yoga. Um, I do a lot of, you know, a specific type of training that you mentioned, you know, and rebar mm -hmm. training and um, I just I tap in, bro. I tap in, man. I, yeah. I, I try to stay tapped in and um, in, in a deep space where I can be present um, and redistribute my energy to do more. I think that's a beautiful space when you can lock in with people or whatever it is you're doing, but constantly push the bar because you're you know you're getting rest, you're getting you know uh, you know satisfaction, fulfillment in other areas. You're 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 striving, but you're you know taking time to be conscious of where you are it's this balance and this constant you know flow honestly like you're on a board you know at sea you know you're gonna wobble you're gonna you know mm -hmm. move around but I think it's it's how you deal with it and uh, I've been lucky to be around some awesome teachers and you know acquire some cool tools that have helped me um, work on myself for a while now and I'm you know only just just beginning I feel but it's a it's an awesome space and I love what you're doing too man I think this is so important and you know the whole podcast game is just it's so where it's at like people are really you know locking into that and um, I think this is a cool space to talk about and open up more so because it can be so many things for so many different people but it's uh, you know one that we all can connect in
one thing that really stood out to me was you told that you told me to you know seek out older mentors growing up in my generation we were the first to get hit with the wave of social media in, yeah. in our de- developmental stages where we you know we might not have the best guidance at those young ages and we're getting hit with all these the dopamine and, and all these external things that sure. can kind of take us off course so for me it's that's that's how I think I've grown a ton over the past years is, is kind of staying away from that and really trying to see all right who am I on this on this earth but for you you didn't really have that in your developmental stages like those main high school years right so yeah. do you think that's something we can work around and, and use to upgrade ourselves because that's really the passion that I had for the podcast is I'm like all right if, if people are going to be on it so much we might as well put stuff out there that could help them consciously yeah. but how do you see that affecting people's development just in terms of social media and how do you think it would have affected your development if you had it growing up? Yeah, I think it's a whole different age. That's a great question too. A whole different age in terms of, um, you know, what social media brings. And um, I think, you know, what everybody lose, loses sight of, and I think a lot of people don't lose sight of this at all. I think a lot of people are really, you know, super laser focused on what it is. It's a tool, you know, and it can mm-hmm. be, you know, a tool to help you with your business, um, help promote a message. Um, you know, or just something that people are unconsciously on, doing unconscious mm-hmm. things on. And, um, you know, I think it's important to recognize that and, you know, to utilize it as such and, you know, to also not let it warp your reality, warp, you know, your perspective and in, in, in what is, because there's a lot of stuff that comes at you, a lot of input, a lot of information. And, um, you know, it's really, that's why I think it's more important, this flow space that we talk about, it's about tuning, it's about mm-hmm. working on yourself, it's about having rituals and practices that are habitual that are going to keep you um in your optimal space you know the the i joke around and talk about it with you guys and like the other you know guys i I train on the hoop court you know about your you know win the game 40 point self you know like what are you doing like what what is that space like what would allow you to be in that space you know the utmost over and over again every time you step on the court and so it's like a formula you know it's like okay i would you know need this amount of sleep i need to be hydrated i need to be eating this i need to have my band series in you know i need to have my you know my my shots my warm-up routine like my 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 focus my foam roll my everything you know whatever whatever that formula is for you you know whatever to the song you listen to to the you know things that you read everything whatever that is it that space and understanding that space and committing to that space and i think that's that's way more important than you know losing yourself on you know a social media you know uh, rant. I mm-hmm. think it's I think it's more of how we lock in on the spaces of our development and how we use those to you know help ourselves bloom into the flower, you know into the garden that we're supposed to be yeah. of, of of opportunity of energy of frequency that we're you know we're, we're redistributing to do more to help um, and, and to flow. And so I think that's that's the space. And so. I don't know if I'm hitting the nail on the head, but the uh, social media, I think, for me, would have might have been, you know, a little bit distracting. Um, I think it, it's a great tool; would have helped in some ways, but at the same time, I think it was, you know, could I could see I can see for a young athlete, a young kid coming up, how that could be distracting, you know, mm-hmm. and without the right, you know, coaching or mentorship around it, and you know that that could be a space that people lose themselves or waste time in and have it be a distraction so I think it's really just you know more about what we're talking about you know this flow space is is, let's focus on that let's focus on what we have to do to you know be better to put ourselves in a position to be our our best self to you know to score 40 and and hit the game winner you know in life you know and I think that's a cool space to, to lock in on and to understand you know like what it is for me to be giving myself the best chance to be in that space and Mm -hmm. I think once you lock in on that you're doing the things that you need to do Mm -hmm. the things that you know are going to you know water the root of your tree and help you be in a better space for yourself over and over again it's going to allow you to be in a better space for other people in in your in your business and your you know passions and your endeavors just whatever you do and I think that's the the overflow of (laughs) the overflow of the flow yeah (laughs) (laughs) Well, I mean, that's a beautiful answer, bro. And, and one thing that really stuck out to me as you, as you were speaking is, I mean, I think social media is, especially in, you know, 12, 13, 14, you're trying to form your identity of who you are and who you want to be. Mm-hmm. And I think the problem, especially for me growing up, you know, I didn't have that buffer. I didn't have the guidance. All right, hey, use this for this purpose. 
and don't get caught up in in what you see. And I think one key point in flow is having you know autonomy in what you're doing. You would yeah. you would play basketball just to play basketball. You wouldn't do it for you know any externals, any approval, any uh, fame or money. And I think that's that's an element that I feel is lost with the rise of social media. Um, I don't know if you feel the same way or how how you think that space has evolved with the rise of social media. Is it is it harder for people to stay in that space where they're intrinsically playing the game, or is it easier to get lost in all right, you know, here's I just scored all this. Here's my highlight video. I'm putting it up on YouTube, on Instagram. Yeah. You know, how, what what do you think is the is the correct space for that? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's a, it's a it's got to be. I think there's an imbalance. I think a lot of people have um, uh, a warped focus on you know what the social media is. It's great to be able to put a mixtape up and you know on a highlight where you know you're scoring or you're highlighting whatever it is in life that you're doing. I think it is, but it's really about this space. It's like what are you doing when you're not there, you know? And and, and we live in an age where so much of what we do daily is you know supposed to be documented and and, and shown. And I I think. I'm thankful for kind of growing up. I, I like to be, you know, the, the the magician behind the scenes making things happen. I don't need, I don't feel this need to, to showcase everything that I'm doing. And mm-hmm. I think that's, there's a good and there's a bad side to that. I mean, a lot of people would say, hey, to really pour into this, you know, tool of social media and, and you know, for what I'm doing, I should be like that. Um, but I just, I've never felt that that was the way to, 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 to really be. Um, mm-hmm. I'm more just locked in on what I need to do and, you know, focused on my growth and my improvements and, you know, checking that and balancing that. Um, and I think that's just the, the space that we all should, or I would offer or encourage, you know, for, for anyone, is just to, you know, use use it for your, you know, the, the aspects of a tool and, and the ways that it can benefit you in your, in your life, whatever it is you're doing. But stay locked in on, you know, your rituals, your your growth, your, you know, meditation, your, your praying, your, you know, physical movement, your, you know, constant, you know, continuum, you know, your, your journey forward. I think yeah. that's, that's like the, that's the forever space, you know, that we should all strive to be in. And then the other things that we're talking about, like the distractions of that social media space or like what, or whatever it is, or like the warpness of what the tool could be, it, it becomes less of a, less of a deal because we're so in the mission, we're so in the, the craft, so in the do. And I think that's the, that's a space that I've always, you know, kind of been a nerd about. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's just the one that we all can relate to. Um, and if we all lock in with a little bit more, there's, there's, there's more, there's, there, there's a, there's a higher space for us to, you know, grow, develop in and um, learn more about ourselves in and, um, you know, master our own energy more so. But you've, you've spoke quite a few times about improving yourself and, and, being on that mission more so than or the quick enjoy, or pleasures, I guess. Instead of instead of seeking that, you seek something that's fulfilling. You know, it's a growth. It's that it's that when you're in that flow, you don't really care about you know you know the challenge that's at hand. You're just you're just trying to fight up that mountain. But mm-hmm. I think the biggest growth that's come for me is just you know pure awareness of seeing all right, where am I actually? Where do I want to be? And where yeah. am I actually? And not letting stuff that I know like. I think a lot of times I understood the concepts of flow, but I, I wasn't really aware of, you know, where was my energy when I'm at home? How, how often yeah. was I on my phone? How, how did I wake up? Was I meditating, you know, with the pure intent that day? So I don't know, for you, where do you feel like you see the most growth for yourself and, and how do you keep that awareness and space to, I don't know, I guess, stay humble in, in the process? Yeah, it's a great question. I think the, uh, you know, the biggest thing is this uh, notion of like self-love, mm-hmm. I, I think is like, has to be first. I think, you know, a lot of, a lot of times we all, you know, get on a, a mission to do something, but we, you know, do things to a point where we're not taking care of ourselves, yeah. you know, or, or, or we're so over, you know, compensated in one end that we're not doing it. And I think understanding yourself and, you know, working through the layers that you need to work through in terms of your, you know, guilt, your shame, your, your, your areas of, um, you know, Improvement, your, your your spaces of, you know, growth. The the refi- you know going left, bro. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean. Shooting with your left. Yeah. You know, like working on your your great three point shooter, but you you can get run off the line. You can't pull up. You got to work on that in life and, mm-hmm. and, and, and metaphorically. You know what I mean. And I just think it's it's locking in on those spaces that's so important. 
and you gotta I said it earlier you gotta have somebody who's gonna like check and balance that like yeah. you know people who are gonna make you better and I think that's you know again a, a metaphor for life and, 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 and sport and relationship I think it's just you know that um that space of improvement but realistic improvement and what we're using to get ourselves you know on, on, a, on a place of or in a place of uh, that continuum you know like having that you know going over and over again and, and, and repeating it and doing it with a space of you know the, the yoga space has been big for me because of you know it's 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 how you come to the mat that day it's it's it, it's it's great that you're there you know it's not about mm. whether I have a beautiful you know amazing practice you know some days I'll hoop and I'm so tight the next morning and I feel like I'm twice my age you know what I mean and I but I'll, I'll get there and you know to get through that and you know just to be there for the practice of that day and to honor it because I'm you know able to do it even though it's not my best you know it, it gets me it gets me there and it, it does something and so I think it, it's, it's kind of like that space of everything that we do you know how do we find that that space of you know honoring the practice time for that day and then putting it down you know what I mean and, and, and giving it giving it it's, it's it's due process it's 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 time but doing it with self-love you know the fact that we're committing to struggling through it mm -hmm. the fact that we're you know trying to do things that are working on the you know left hand shots of life um you know we're, we're honoring our highest self our honoring our highest self and so i think that's been the biggest space for me is like don't do it for anybody else don't do it to try to make this team don't do it to try to you know get this end result do it because you know you said you would do it because it's like your mission you wrote it down and said you were going to do it yeah. daily because if you trust that for time it's going to yield it's going to give you something and so i think that's the space that i would offer and encourage for anyone and it's it's uh it's, it's all about self-love and i think that's been the biggest thing for me is like loving myself and you know understanding my worth and my value to things and you know not being afraid to you know speak to that and 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 humbly though like i'm so yeah. grateful and i don't know it all i'm, I'm still learning i'm still figuring things out and I'm, but I'm so thankful and I'm, I'm so appreciative of what's going on and you know the good the bad the ugly all of it you know and I think that's the it's just a constant Venn diagram of all that space and hitting refresh on it it's 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 never you know flow isn't a destination like you're not going to just be at flow it's just kind of a constant you know balance of things I think and so it's it's how we recognize when we're out of a rhythm and I think that's learning yourself and yeah you know, but you got to love yourself to learn yourself, you know yeah. what I mean? Otherwise, you're going to run from it. So I think in a long-winded, roundabout way, uh, I think self-love's been the biggest piece for me to under understand more so and, and, and use that to, you know, my benefit, but then everybody else's benefit. So That's beautiful, bro. I mean, do you feel like self-love kind of goes with uh, just non-judgment, um, I guess, in, in, yeah. a, in a sense? I think I think it is. I think it is, you know, yes, 100%. I think it's, I think it's you can't judge... Um, you know, the space you, of the day. It has to be just yeah. an honoring of, you know what, you're doing it. Yeah. And in honoring the, the space of the practice, mm -hmm. of the craft, of the of the mission, of just the journey and, 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 and giving it that, that lock in of your focus and your presence that, that day over and over again, it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna bring something good, you know, and so I think that's just what it is. It's like having that, you know, that continuum. That's like, you know, shooting. That's like, you know, if you're missing a bunch of shots and like and you start being bad to yourself you know what I mean? yeah. with your self-talk and it's you know it's, it's all about you know i work with you know kids to you know my pros you know on the same thing it's just about you know what am i saying to re refresh what am i doing to recognize okay i'm a great shooter but i've, I've missed the last four or five shots you know how, how have i analyzed those shots you mm -hmm. know what are my tendencies when i get in a rut and i miss shots what's my you know What's the space that I that I'm in when I'm missing shots? Okay, I hitch on my shot. The, the ball's not coming consistently off my piece fingers. Um, my elbows out. Um, I'm not loaded. My I'm, I'm too straight legged. I don't have my seat back. My chest forward. My hands, you know, aren't ready to catch. I'm, I'm loading on the way up instead of catching and being whatever the case is. And I think that's like the same metaphor for life. You know, how do we recognize okay I'm frustrated right now so this is what I need to do have I you know have I eaten <laughs> yeah have I worked out today have I meditated have I you know had some physical release um you know I'm feeling grief I'm feeling sad okay like what am I you know putting my mind you know to to understand those feelings more so how am I 
doing things to get a higher understanding in, in what I'm feeling. You know, what am I reading? What, what kind of coaching am I getting? What kind of, you know, people laugh at, you know, some people laugh at therapy and think therapy is beautiful. I think any, any, it's, it's like coaching. You need coaching for all these things, you know, and so you have to find people that can, you know, coach you and, and, and give you a, a value opinion and put constantly in check, um, you know, the things that we, you got to think about the way you think. And I, I think when you have others who, who challenge that and who, you know, offer tools and, and, and guidance, and that's beautiful. And I think that's what we have to do around everything. I think that's the, 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 the highest human being frequency when we're, when we're constantly, you know, growing, constantly improving, you know, causing just enough stress to, you know, make ourselves uncomfortable but still have our needs fulfilled and, you know, work on ourselves so we can redistribute, do more, help others, um, you know, be the change we want to see and, you know, work on things. And, you know, people laugh, people say, oh, that space is corny, but I think there's a, because I've even been like that, I've even, you know, but it's just trusting and, you know, going through some hurt, going through some heartache, going through some some f- serious failures, you know. I, I feel like, you know, I'm, I've been on, I'm on here episode one, i failed <laughs> way more times than I've won. I'm not on it, I'm not trying to be on here like, preaching I'm not trying to be like that at all like I'm yeah. I've, I've failed over and over again you know and I think you know there's some cool things that are happening right now because of that and some great self-awareness because of that and um, you know I just think it's the the spaces of improvement the spaces of refining and I love being in the space that I am because it's, it's, it's about that it's, it's, it's about you know continuing that and how do we you know keep that pouring into our lives outside of how we train, you know, outside of, you know, the, the craft, but the, the life craft, you know, and, um, anyway, this is, um, this is dope, man. I hope, I hope that, you know, you continue to get a bunch of other people on here to, you know, share their, their space and, you know, what they're about. Cause it's just so unique to everybody. And, um, yeah, man, anyway, I don't know if that's yeah, no, I think locking in on what I, you're talking about. No, but. you, you always hit on, hit it right on the head, bro. Cause I, I think it is unique to everyone. Everybody's got their own space, especially yeah. for me. I I took in so much over the last three years. I, mm-hmm. I read so many books, had so many great mentors like like you, man. Just one or two links with you, I'm just like, man, that's that's where I want to be. But I started to judge way too hard. I'm like, yeah. I would go into meditation practice with that outcome, and I and it what shifted my whole perception on that as I read this book that basically said if you have this outcome in mind, it's it's going to be another burden in your in your head. You you got to be where you're at and mm-hmm. and have that self love and non judgment to you know, to really get to where you want to be. But you, you sent me a text once, I think it was three years ago, I was transferring to, to APU um, after I was, I played at Eastern and uh, you basically just said, you, you, you told me how far you thought my game had, had gone and, and just to keep my star lit as I was uh, over at APU. It's awesome. And uh, yeah, I was just wondering awesome. kind of, what did you, what did you mean by that? Cause at, at that time I was, I was going through a lot um, external pressures from from family oh, I'm transferring like what's going on I'm going to a different level now mm-hmm. um, why do you think it's necessary for us to keep our own star lit as as we've talked about those external pressures uh, whether it's family friends social media why do you think it's so important to keep our own star lit as we do what we do and and we're on our journey yeah you're, you're super super awesome bro for you know like even taking note of that remember that it's, it's awesome and I'm, uh, I'm glad you you know brought that up I think that it's so easy in like life to get stuck in the the, the, the routine and, and and to make life like this grind, this this grunt. Mm. But it's like this is our life. This yeah. is like you know, we're here, we have this opportunity, we're still breathing. You know, there's people before us who've, you know, sacrificed so we could be here. You know what I mean? There's all that going on. I think it's really about just being, you know, conscious of how amazing, you know, it is that we have a chance to do things and mm-hmm. and, and keeping this you know, I know Dr. Bob is our our guy. You know, and, and you know we, we you know Tim Manson and you know they 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 both are awesome figures in this community around you know training and healing and you know working more mindfully. But I think something that, that's so amazing about them is they have this childlike wonderment. Yeah. And I think what I meant when I said it to you is to keep your star lit in terms of first of all people downplay how amazing this life is and how how many things are going on around us. So to keep this vibrance about the opportunity and this like excitement about it and then you know the the grind of you know who can be a lot sometimes you know I remember being in college being a pro being you know at all sorts of levels and, and, and understanding the same feeling it's the same thing in, 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 a, in a work situation and a relationship situation a family situation whatever 
but sometimes you can get really worn out and tired and, and, and maybe not be as appreciative of what you're doing. Mm-hmm. And I think what I mean by that is to, you know, keep that childlike wonderment, keep that lit you know, stoked flame about what you're doing. I remember yourself being that little kid mm. shooting outside, you know, on the, the asphalt, you know, it, it, w- before the game even w- was the game that you know it is now. And mm-hmm. I think that's that's what I meant by that, just to keep that that lit fire because when you keep that, there's always, like, the best day ahead of you. There's always this kind of, and I think you're dope. I think you got, you know, it's awesome that you're doing this. I think you need to keep, you know, hooping and, you know, keep ringing the rag on, on what you have going because I think there's more for you there, whether yeah. it's, you know, to ascend and play professionally or just the lessons that you're going to learn and going for that and and, and the connections and the things that it's going to bring you. I think it's just, you know, you should do it because you can. You have a Mm -hmm. legit opportunity to do that and, you know, it's your time to do that. You should, you know, ring the rag of opportunity on it and whatever happens from it, it's going to bless you and it's going to, you know, be a transferable skill set. And I think, you know, I'm just somebody who's kind of, you know, after hitting my head on a wall a few times and, you know, on the ceiling of a few things, I I found a, a, a different way to kind of, you know, work and, and redistribute again, redistribute my energy to work on things that I'm passionate about and put things together that are around what I want to do. And it's all been from failing, man, like over and over again, but not being afraid to and, you know, trying to, you know, go after things that I'm childlike about. Yeah. So uh, that's funny. I was going to ask you, bro, what what is your origin story? So I think that's something that helped reground me when I was going through the, the struggles of college hoop. Um, I had this origin story. I remember going to my, my cousin's house and just shooting on this nerve hoop. I was like, I'm going to be the first person to hit 100 in a row. And, and those type of stories that they, they regrounded me in that in that that bliss of basketball. Mm-hmm. And so do you have one that kind of comes to, to mind that, that helps you? or? It's funny, man. I, I remember a lot of things as a kid. I think the the main thing that I remember was, um, you know, being probably like in the fifth grade, um, being in Iowa. You know, my family's from New York and North Carolina, um, and my parents were young in their careers and, you know, moved to Iowa City, Iowa, and, you know, had great opportunities for themselves as, you know, young professionals, and it was an amazing place to grow up. You know, shout out to all my Iowa City, Iowa City heads, um, you know, I, I, but it was a, an amazing uh, place, and I remember being in, like, the fifth grade, and I was playing a bunch of sports, and I knew I liked basketball the most, but I think I got just cooked by a couple guys my age and a little bit older than me and I knew I hadn't been putting any any work and so I just kind of remember being like you know what I'm gonna lock in on this I'm gonna make this my kind of you know whatever happens with this like whether I make it all the way or if I don't or if I'm gonna you know use this as my you know life sharpening my my, my skill sharpening you know make this my purpose with you know movement and intention and and, and, and you know focus around the game so I think that's kind of like the what would spark the fire because I knew I liked it but I wasn't giving it the I had the childlike wonderment but I wasn't giving the, the focus and passion about it uh, or, or to it that I needed to and so that kind of you know woke that up for me you're probably one of the the best one-on-one players I've ever played against and yeah. you know you got you got such a unique unique style that I, that I think uh, especially people who haven't trained with you kind of throws them off a little bit the first time they see you play so you know talk about I mean, I know you played professionally. I know you played high-level Division One basketball. What What are some peak experiences that you had in the game that that you felt came from all that hard work and came from the struggles? Maybe even the worst failures you've had that have brought you to that peak peak experience and that awareness of it. Um, yeah. What What are some that would stick out maybe professionally or in college? Yeah, just it's awesome, man. You You really like dialed in with this, bro. Um, I think the um, the space of communication is so important and you know I've always been somebody who's wanted to be better in my game and I think a lot of people want to be better but you know you don't know what you don't know and Mm -hmm. so if you're you know you can spend hours in the gym but not be productive you know you can spend so much time working on things and and not actually be getting better Mm -hmm. and so I think it's so important to have a you know a a muse or somebody you can check and balance and who's credible who can give you feedback um, and, you know, for me, I've had, you know, great coaching, great development, and then I've always been a seeker, like I was talking about earlier, and so just understanding, like, the, you know, I was getting great teaching, great information, but then taking it another level to understand, like, the details and the fibers and the the, the fascia of moves and, and, mm-hmm. and movement and technique and change of, change of speed and how to be more efficient, you know, 
And I think, um, you know, part of the origin too is, you know, I was coming back from playing overseas and I started getting to this hip and psoas, hip flexor, you know, action and things were bothering me. I couldn't recover, you know, and um, I needed to figure out a different way to train. I was too, you know, developed in uh, primary muscle, you know, dominant groups. I had no intrinsic strength and I needed to shift my focus and my model. And so I think that's another big origin for me, like figuring out, you know, the, the nuances of what I needed to work on for my game to keep playing at a higher level, you know, and how to, you know, fix my shot, how to, you know, work on, you know, rhythm to be, get my handle and my awareness better to be, you know, a true combo guard because I couldn't, you know, just be a, a two guard. Um, you know, working on different things like that and understanding what it was to get better and, um, you know, really focusing on that and then having, you know, some issues and complications as a young athlete in my body and figuring out, you know, finding that I couldn't do the same things over and over again. I had to do some different stuff and that's what led me to, you know, rebar training and, you know, a whole different focus of, you know, my development and, and how I need to unwind some of the overcompensation, do the, uh, you know, things around my balance that's going to keep me, you know, better. And so I think it's just this, um, you have to constantly assess, constantly assess and figure out what it is. And so for me and my training style, I've, I've always been like that as an athlete. And so now I just want to give people the, the tools that I've acquired. And I think the the beautiful space of mastery is how do you get to a high level in those things and, you know, to give people tools and frame work around how to get there quickly or how to be more efficient on their journey, um, how to, you know, do things that's going to help them reduce their chances for, you know, this, that, and the third, or, or heighten their awareness in this so they're more, you know, primed to be optimal in their, in their highest self. That's awesome to me. I think that's like the space that we should try to be in and try to help and coach and encourage and, you know, allow others to critique and help us in, you know, throughout every aspect of life. And so I, I think my training style is sort of, you know, this, this space between the spaces. How do we move in, in those and, um, you know, understand those patterns and, and the differences and, you know, when to lean in and when to lean back. And I think life's like that. And I think it's, um, you know, it's, it's tough to get there by yourself. But I think if you, you know, constantly seek and, you know, find people to sharpen you and, you know, you surround yourself self by, you know, those that you want to be around and, you know, understand yourself more so you, you, you can, find yourself in a cool space and, and, and acquiring things on the way. So, I remember, f I think five years ago, you showed me the rebar, and, yeah. I, and I get in, I'm playing the best defense of my life. I'm like, when's this, when's this coming out, man? Because yeah. I was the same way. You know, I was overtraining all the time. Um, didn't really have a, a purpose for a lot of my lifting or anything like that. Um, and I just sent you an article recently about the, the injuries and, and what people have been saying about overuse and, and different uh, – problems that people have been having in their knees because of they don't have their core locked in they don't have their hips tight um, and so you've helped develop the rebar um, it's a performance and rehabilitation tool that I think is going to evolve a lot of the training in the sports world but how, how do you see it evolving all different types of athletes and and how do you where do you guys see yourself taking it in the future yeah it's awesome um, you know I'm really excited about uh, you know what we're doing I think it's such a um, needed space uh one that solves you know some uh, issues that are becoming more um people are becoming more aware about the balances of of, of life and, and training i think it's more acceptable and, and and trending now to talk about you know mental health um mm -hmm. you know rest and recovery uh you know just things that before I think there had been like a certain mentality around if you're thinking of you know just training or how to how to work out how to get strong and so I think there's this space you know that uh, you know we have with rebar training that's really uh, special because it's different it's more about fine tuning um, it's about you know working on connectivity working on your you know kinetic uh, harmony working on your stabilization mobility your functional patterns um, how to constantly improve your form so you can optimize and you can be in a, in a better state of flow mm -hmm. with your body, how you understand your body. So when you have things that are nagging and chronic, you can, you know, treat them well in terms of your movement and in terms of your recorrective uh, process. And so it's a cool tool for that. Um, the Rebar Alpha Pro, go check that out, rebartraining.com, r3vartraining.com. Yeah, we're getting it going. Um, yeah, but it's a, it's a cool space. And I think for me, in, infusing that with uh, my basketball skill development has been, you know, 
this aha kind of mo- moment when I figured out some nuances of the game that you know I wish I would have known when I was 15 mm-hmm. you know and, and, and wish I would have had this tool when I was 15 and so for me and you know what I'm doing now you know working in this space of development it's to give those lessons you know and help people get to a higher level quicker and understand what they need to refine on so they can constantly refine their form and um, and improve and I think that's what the rebar does it helps you you know do the things that you want to do more so because it's it's balancing out the the pound and the impact of you know the, the work that we do on the field and the court in the in the, in the weight room um, you know in the yoga studio whatever it just gives you a, a fine-tuned approach to what you're doing and so um, for me it's really important I, I found it to be you know something that I need and I think it's something that you know I wish I would have had when I was younger and so I think it's about just passing those tools on to people and it's a tool man it's a tool Mm -hmm. you know and and I think it'll help you know anyone and everyone who's active and you know able to move still and and who has desires to to keep that platform high or to rehabilitate some areas so yeah I mean well I'll definitely put the link uh, in the description and obviously I'll throw some videos over this to show them what the rebar is and and just some of the moves that you guys have on it but uh, Dr. Bob, you know, we're both linked with him. He My told God. us, you know, or he told me once, no pain, no gain. He wanted to switch it to no connection, no game, no gain. And yeah. I mean, you've said that a lot. You know, it's all about the connection. Yeah. And I think training with you has really, has really shown me that. I mean, I used to train all these different moves, all this drip ball handling. And I, I don't know, I really felt with you, I had this connection that was deeper. And, and then my game was just so much tighter after one session. And I remember, you know, I, I trained with you and Cole one time and I started using the rhythm stuff that we did the next day with all the kids that I was training. Like everything I just felt was so much smarter and mm-hmm. so much more in tune than than all the other training that I was doing that was just kind of, you know, more, more, more versus like, hey, get your movement down and get your connection with the game so you're so you're freer, so you can play in a loose, in a loose way. Um, but with all that being said, where do you... I mean, I feel like a lot of your moves, like the jab rock is kind of like a dance, bro. Where where did you get the inspiration for a lot of these these movements and, and patterns that you put into great training sessions for, for us and, and other people? Yeah, I think it's kind of, um, it's trial and error, man, you know, like failing and, um, you know, figuring out a way to optimize and be just more efficient. Um, you know, you young guys who are hooping, you know, coaches don't want you to over dribble the ball. so figuring out ways to be crafty and, and, and maneuver, you know, and shake somebody before you put the ball down, mm-hmm. um, just to create space and trust good mechanics on a shot. And, um, you know, I, I've, you know, grown up and, in, in, you know, around in, in great hoop cities as a kid. And Iowa City is a very, you know, Iowa City, Iowa is a very, you know, prominent basketball space in terms of, you know, the college and University of Iowa and, and the field house is just this epic gym, you know, where there's six courts and there's games going on from, you know, 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. and, you know, at all levels and, you know, all the pros and the college guys come back, high school guys were, you know, a leader playing and there's this culture, you know, there's and there's a summer league that, 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 that creates this vibe around the game and development. And so I grew up, you know, being exposed to that, wanting to be in that and just having to move to an amazing place in Seattle when I was, you know, in the midst of understanding my passion and my childlike wonderment in the game. And, um, you know, I've always wanted to be you know really good and so I just kind of you know seeked you know where the run was at out here where where the you know the hoopers were at and just kind of you know being in that and, and learning seeing what was effective for people and just kind of studying that you know being t- caught taught and coached on moves but then you know wanting to wanting to take the the mastery to another level you know and just figuring some things out that were really effective around the spaces of you know being efficient and you know able to create space and get into your spots and so anyway I, I feel like I've just kind of been a nerd about the game man just studied and you know I found some cool stuff that's been effective for me at you know all levels and you know still today and um, it's fun to you know pass that on and, and, and see you know you guys taking that and using it and you know becoming better having awesome experiences with it and, and, and using you know it to your benefit on the court and then like we're talking about the, there's something about it that carries over and it's a little bit different it's outside the court space and I think that's even you know it's dope to get buckets but you know buckets on the court and and off the court is is pretty dope too so so what I mean you've you played so many games in your life but do you have one 
that stands out as like your peak performance and experience and take me through a little bit a little bit of what got you into that space and like mentally the day before the situation the environment what what got you into that space and, and if you could give a, a few details on that yeah I mean the it's kind of like what we talked about earlier there's certain feelings and, and emotions and you know situations that are gonna happen I think throughout life no matter what we're going through and so um, you know humbly I, I've cooked up in a bunch of games bro <laughs> I've cooked up in a bunch of games I think you know for me it's been this quest of understanding what allowed me to cook up in this game yeah. you know what, what was it and I think it's understanding that circling all these things circling the you know what did I eat how did I sleep you know because you've, you've had, I've had great games when I've been like sick, you know, yeah. but then it's like I was so focused because I was stressed and like needed to lock in on the game, you know, so I was like, my, my focus was there. And so it's understanding, you know, the emotions behind that or understanding the patterns, you know, my body felt really good. I was really loose, you know, maybe I, then I did an extra band series. I did, a, you know, an extra tap in with my, you know, just movement mechanics, got extra shots up, got a massage, just, you know, really focused and visualized what I needed to do. And I think, those are the consistencies that I, I've seen, you know, throughout a great game or a great performance. It's been this um, space that I've created for myself to be most optimal. And that's the thing that I think is so important about flow is understanding that it's not a freak thing. It's not a freak thing when you, you, when you, when you cook up, you know, mm -hmm. and, you, and you, you score a lot in the game or you have a successful win in life or business or, you know, you meet somebody and you, 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 you hit it off with them. And it, that's not a mistake. You know, sometimes we tap into that and we're on fire, you know, but it's like, how do we understand how to get on fire all the time? Yeah. What, how do we put ourselves in the best position to be on fire, you know, as an athlete or also just in life and you know, the way that we communicate, the way that we're living, you know, and I think that's the space that I love. I, I think it's all related. And so, you know, for me, it's been this constant, you know, you know, space of, um, you know, working on my process to keep me there um so that kind of doesn't really ask it one time specifically i remember uh, my family came out to watch me play when i was playing in france and you know i had kind of been hitting heads with my coach and you know respect the coaches out there players you know be, be coachable and all that well, i say that to say to say that i just was you know in a tough space as an athlete as a pro and, and, and needing to remember my childlike wonderment in the game and so you know i had to really keep myself uh, motivated and I was working really hard like getting extra shots and um, my family came out in the midst of this kind of you know tough spot that I was in and that we were in as a team we had lost some games that we shouldn't have and you know I um, ended up just having a really good series of games and they saw me play and you know just shot lights out and you know we won two out of the three and um, you know I, I gained some of my coaches trust back and but I remember I, I just didn't pout I didn't I didn't let it you know affect the things that I could control. And I think that's the the, the space is like I, I knew what I needed to do to put myself in a flow state, whether I got called on to be, you know, able to shine like that or not. I needed to just work on my, you know, my tools to get, get me ready to be, you know, ready for the opportunity where it came or not. And so anyway, I think that was a good stretch. It was awesome to see my family and like all these years of just playing, hooping, working and having them be out there and, you know, support me as, you know, we did well and got back on track so yeah I mean I think you have such a deep understanding of flow because I think that's the goal of flow is to keep flowing it's not this this peak that you just want to hit one time you should always want to be in it and and finding that being in it is 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 really the enjoyment that you get from life and, yeah. and we I mean it's it's shown man the people who have you know the greatest successes or you know all the money in the world they could be depressed man they could be taken out because they don't have that constant seeking of all right I need to be in flow not just for that one moment or for that one thing but you know all the time and that and that's what I think all of our focus should be because I think that's the greatest gift that we can give to others and, and ourselves. Um, but you know moving on from basketball I know you have another creative outlet uh, with music and and why does that seem to be something that you like to to tap into and and what kind of space does that give you um, off the court? Yeah, I think um, I think we're all artists, so we all have this like you know these treasures inside of us. It's just about if we water them, you know, if we if we work on them or not. Um, luckily for me, I, I was you know thrown in the choir <laughs> at a young age, and I never thought that that would be something that I would be into or you know do. Um, 
I used to get clowned out, clowned <laughs> by my boys about it and all that kind of stuff. But it was something that I just learned to, you know, appreciate. And I had a great uh, reformative teacher, uh, Nancy McFarland. Bless her heart. She was a, an amazing woman. She just, um, you know, believed in me and, and really got me working on some stuff that was so outside of my zone. But just learning, you know, classical, gospel, um, you know, contemporary plays, uh, you know, doing a lot of ragtime, just working on different types of music. And so it gave me this appreciation for it and this curiosity about, you know, how to, you know, work with my voice, put put lyrics together. And so I've always kind of been in that space, you know, since a kid. And it's been fun over the years to have that, you know, just be like a hobby and then grow into, you know, working with some pretty talented artists and, you know, production groups and, you know, working on songs. And everybody keeps asking me about stuff. We're, we're probably going to drop something here soon. I'm just kind of... <laughs> You know, I'm working on the flute, y'all. Working on the flute <laughs> so the music can just come through. You know, there's no, uh, there's no rush. There's no, there's no rush on the process. So, That's awesome, man. Yeah, but it, it's a, uh, I think, um, you know, I love music. I think it's a universal language, and um, it's something that I use as a creative outlet just to, you know, cope with things. And you know, it's it's become just a, a passion, you know, for me. And you know, we, we're really busy right now, but we're definitely, you know, aligning some. Uh, cool things around that space again and revamping that which is awesome that's so, awesome man yeah so you know being being such a successful athlete musician artist you know all of those things i know there's a lot on your plate but something that i've had to to reground as i've as i've left the you know the schedule in the box of college hoops and now i'm kind of on my own trying to figure out all right what do i really want to do I had to really come to grips with me being a human being instead of just like a human doer and just going through my day, going through my day. Um, you know, I guess the last question I have is, what do you think your your purpose is here and where do, where do you want to go? But how do you do that in a way that's a human being instead of, you know, got to go, got to go, got to go and do all these things versus, man, this is what I feel I was put on earth to do and, you know, share this with people and, and, and affect different lives. Yeah, man, that's beautiful. Um, it's funny, I was kind of working on something um, in, a, in a class. Uh, it's just kind of a, you know, mental health sort of, you know, coaching, um, dealing with, you know, your, dealing with your demons, man, dealing with things we all have to, to, to work with and understanding tools around them. And we were working on a mission statement and I, I wrote something down um, and it was uh, to create uh, or I create a world of infinite opportunity and manifestation through passion, authentic light, love, and genuine connection. And I think, um, you know, that space for me is really cool. I think in, in you know, being secure and strongly who you are and, um, you know, connecting with people genuinely and, you know, keeping that as a pillar in what you do, uh, you know, throughout, um, you know, whether it's business, whether it's you know, training, um, just life, just just those as principles. It, it leaves this opportunity for amazing things to happen. And I think there's, um, you know, miracles all around us. You know, it's just whether we're tuning to see them or to have our vibe in the right frequency so we can link, link yeah. the wave. You know. And so for me, I, I want to, you know, just stay authentic and, and and do what I do what I do and you know grow that, scale that, um, you know keep self-loving but love others and, 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 and build spaces that are going to help people find you know the the tools to solving the riddles of life and the things that they need to do to conquer their you know themselves you know I think we, we're all you know in this epic battle you know to do good or bad and you know to, to figure things out and so I think when we look at it, if you look at somebody through a lens like that like everybody's doing the best mm -hmm. that they can with what they have you know it's it should be our duty to, 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 you know, pass on a little game, pass on, you know, a little helper that's going to, you know, get the soul to a higher space. And, um, you know, that's just, I really believe in that. That's, that's no gas. That's just like, you know, who I am. And I want to, you know, stay in that space and only grow it and, you know, just continue to be in that. So it's awesome, man. Is that an app you have coming out or what were you talking about with the mental health stuff? Oh no, I don't have a you know. Oh oh, you're just that's just I, I want to let's stay open to the opportunity. So no, well, I'm maybe, thinking that maybe speaking that. it to, to existence, brother. But um, yeah, no, I, I was uh you know just speaking to there's, there's a, a really dope class I was taking. Oh, that the was kinda, class kind of okay. teaching, but you know let's let's not limit ourselves. Let's not box ourselves in. Well, maybe yeah. that's maybe that's what's next, man. Maybe. Yeah. Let's no, I love that, man. Just, <laughs> I mean, I just feel like not having the fear of of being yourself and being authentic because that's when. That's when you can really take those those strides and those leaps. 
Uh, but thank you, man, for coming on. If you have anything else to, to throw out there, we'll throw all your contact below. Yeah. But, I mean, do you have anything, any last words? Oh, before, man. Just, oh, actually, sorry. Oh, go ahead. Before, we have a, uh, we have a basketball shot. Each guest is going to have a one shot for $10 outside. Okay. So after, after you uh, Love that. say your, your, your final uh, words, we'll go out there and do that. Love it. Uh, but yeah, thank you for coming on, man. I really appreciate it. And I've obviously learned a ton. This is, this is my journey too. When I'm filming these, I just really want to learn from the people that come on. And uh, thank you for being so honest and open with uh, your journey, man. Hey, you know, thank you for having me. Um, super appreciative and, you know, grateful and, uh, you know, just humbled for the opportunity. And, um, you know, I'm really uh, excited for what you have going and, you know, how we're going to collaborate more so and, you know, people tap in, tap into the flow station, yeah. <laughs> uh, check it out, you know, and uh, if there's anything I can you know, do for any of the listeners and, you know, help out in any way, uh, please, please let me know. And yeah, thanks again for the opportunity to, to be on and, you know, blessings and keep yeah. flowing. Appreciate you, brother. Yeah, appreciate you too, bro. Yeah. The first $10 shot. Wow. We got hold up. Let's show, let's show them the, we got it up here. $10. Oh. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to today's episode. I wanted to give another quick shout out to my sponsor, MindSport. MindSport is a meditation app made specifically for athletes. If you want to improve your performance on and off the court, lower your stress levels, learn the foundations of meditation and yoga, and improve your quality of sleep, this app is for you. Make sure to give it a download in the iTunes App Store, and we'll see you in the next video.